Since you're wearing a SpaceX shirt, let me let me ask. Uh, so the, I, I didn't realize that. I, was I, but <laughs> I apologize. To so it's, it's on call point, you off. So it's on topic. Yeah. I'll take it. So Crew Dragon, the first uh, crewed mission out into space since the the space shuttle, and just by first time ever by a commercial company. I mean, it's an incredible accomplishment, I think, but it's also just an incredible. It, it inspires imagination amongst people that this is the first step in a long, like vibrant journey of humans into space. Oh yeah. So what do you, what are your, how do you feel? Is this, is, you know, is this exciting to you? Yeah, it is. I think it's great. The idea of seeing it basically done by smaller entities instead of by governments. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a heavy collaboration between SpaceX and NASA in this case, but moving in the direction of not necessarily requiring an entire country and its government to make it happen, but that you can have um, uh, something closer to a single company doing it. We're not there yet because it's, it's not like they're unilaterally saying like we're just shooting people up into space. Um, it's just a sign that we're able to do more powerful things with smaller groups of people. Uh, I find that inspiring. Innovate quickly. I hope I mean, we see people land on Mars in my lifetime. My do life. you think we will? I think so. I mean, I think there's a ton of challenges there, right? Like radiation being kind of the biggest one. And I think there's a ton of people who uh, look at that and say, why? Why would you want to do that? Let's let the robots do the science for us. But I think there's an, enough people who are like genuinely inspired about broadening like the worlds that we've touched yeah. um, or people who think about things like backing up the light of consciousness with like super long-term visions of terraforming. Like as long Sorry, as there's- backing an, up the light of consciousness? Yeah, the thought that, uh, you know, if we if Earth goes to hell, ah. we got to have a backup somewhere. Um, a lot of people see that as pretty out there. And it's like not in the short term future. But I think that's an inspiring thought. I think that's a reason to like get up in the morning. And I feel like most employees at SpaceX feel that way, too. Do you think we'll colonize Mars one day? No idea. Like either AGI kills us first or if we're like allowed. I don't know if it'll take <laughs> For a allowed. <laughs> well, like honestly, it's, it takes, it would take such a long time. Like, okay, you might have a small colony, right? Um, something like what you see in um, the Martian, but not like people living comfortably there. Um, but if you want to talk about actual like second earth kind of stuff, that would, that's just like way far out there. And the future moves so fast that it's hard to predict. It's like we might just kill ourselves before that even becomes viable. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of possibilities where it could be just. It doesn't have to be on a planet. We could be floating out in space. Have have uh, have a have a space faring backup solution. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't have uh, that doesn't have to deal with the constraints that a planet. I mean, a planet provides a lot of possibilities and resources, but it also has some constraints. Yeah. I mean, for me. For for some reason, it's a deeply exciting possibility. Oh yeah, it, yeah. All of the people who are like skeptical about it, or like, why, why do we care about going to Mars? It's like, what makes you care about anything? If that's exactly. not inspiring. <laughs> it's hard. Actually, it's hard to hear that because, it, it, exactly as you put it, on a philosophical level, it's hard to say why do anything. I don't know. It's it's like the people who say like, you know, I've been doing like an insane challenge the last thirty something days your pull-ups and the pull-ups and push-ups and like you know a bunch of people are like awesome you're insane but awesome and then some people are like why <laughs> why do anything i i don't know at this it, there's a calling it's uh i i'm with jfk a little bit is because we do these things because they're hard there's something in the human spirit that says like same with like a math problem there's something you fail once and it's like this feeling that, you know what, I'm not going to back down from this. There's something to be discovered in overcoming this thing. Well, so what I like about it is, um, and I also like this about the moon missions, sure, it's kind of arbitrary, but you can't move the target. So right. you can't make it easier and say that you've accomplished the goal. And when that happens, it just demands actual innovation, right? Like protecting humans from the radiation in space on the flight there, while there, hard problem demands innovation. You can't move the goalpost to make that easier. Almost certainly the innovations required for things like that will be relevant in a bunch of other domains too. Um, so like the idea of doing something merely because it's hard, it's like loosely productive. Great. But as long as you can't move the goalposts, there's probably going to be these secondary benefits that uh, like we should all strive for. Yeah. I mean, 
it's hard to formulate the Mars colonization problem as something that has a deadline, which is the problem. But if there was a deadline, uh, then the amount of things we would come up with by forcing ourselves to figure out how to colonize that place would be just incredible. 